السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله السلام العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ثم أما بعد إن شاء الله we'll continue our discussion today uh, about uh, uh, zakat al-mal uh, we mentioned last time the reward and the for those who pay zakah on time and those the punishment of those who don't um, pay their zakah and we talk briefly about zakat al-dhahab wal fidda and talk about the nisab and the shurut uh, uh, upon which one must pay his zakah um, again we'll repeat it very briefly and quickly uh, zakat al-mal uh, basically uh, it has to reach a nisab and as we mentioned last time according to the price of the gold these days about three thousand six hundred dollars. If you have this amount of money saved, or more, of course, saved, um, whether in your home, in the bank, um, and uh, uh, the whole year uh, elapsed upon it, then two point five percent is due. Um, so these are the conditions that you have to have this nisab. And by the way, you have to own this money. We'll talk about debt and other forms where you don't have really the money with you. So if you own this money and this money stayed with you, um, saved for a full lunar year, then um, uh, zakah is, is due, 2.5%. Uh, so today we'll ad address some specific uh, uh, subjects related to uh, zakat al-mal. Al-ulama um, talked in the past about zakat al-dhahab and zakat al fidda um, and uh, you will find out as we speak today or tonight inshallah that there are plenty of opinions sometimes it's consensus and sometimes uh, or most of the time we'll find at least two opinions uh, regarding one particular question one of these questions is that if someone has a gold that's less than 20 dinar uh, of gold uh, or less than 200 dinar of silver this is the misal for the what if someone holds less than the nisab of gold and less than the nisab of fidda, but if you put them both together, they will um, constitute a nisab. Half nisab in dhahab, in gold, and half nisab in silver. Should we combine these two to calculate the nisab? Some ulama said yes, because this is uh, your money uh, and stayed with you uh, regardless of the... Of the um, you know, the nature of, of the, the, the uh, money here, whether gold or silver, it is money and it is nisab. Other ulama, Imam Shafi is one of them, said no, this nisab has to com be complete for each kind. So you have to have a nisab on gold to pay zakah on gold. You have to have a nisab on silver to pay zakah on silver. And he made the analogy uh, of uh, camels and cows, for example. If someone has less uh, uh, number of cows, then he should not give any nisab for this. And he also have, he do not, does not combine cows and camels and give something in between. So um, that's important because sometimes we have different kind of money. We have stocks, we'll talk about it. We have um, cash and we have uh, merchandise, uh, goods that we sell. So should we combine these things to find out whether we have nisab or not? Uh, I think it's safer to say that you combine both of them. This is the opinion of uh, so many uh, uh, scholars who said, yes, you combine the two, uh, if, especially in gold and silver. Um, another uh, subject that also pe many people ask about it, zakat al diyun or, or the debt. If you give someone um, money, uh, someone borrows money from you, all right? And this money stays with him, and he says, inshallah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you back in this time. So the time came to not pay for a year and two. So are you required to pay zakah for this money? Be huh? Yes? Okay. That's a, that's a for straightforward answer, but the ulama actually looked at different scenarios. And they said there's a difference between two kinds of debts. If you give a money uh, or, or lend money to someone who acknowledge uh, that he owes you money um, 
and who is relatively doing financially well, and he promised to pay it, and ask for some more time, but he did not deny that um, he owes you this money. Uh, and, and then, then you consider this money as your money, uh, saved in someone else's hand. So it is still your money, uh, and then you should pay zakah on this. The second opinion said that no, you don't pay zakah um, uh, un unless uh, you get this money back. So let's say he will he will pay you back in a year, but he, the money stayed with him for three years. So many ulama said that. Um, you, when you get this money back, you pay the zakah for three years. The third opinion said that you only pay zakah when you get this money for only one year. It, it, is, it is clear. All right? So uh, three or even four opinions, actually. Um, the first opinion is that this is the opinion of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib and uh, Abu Hanifa and, and Ahmed ibn Hanbal and others. They said that um, only you pay zakah when you get the money for whatever years passed. If you give his, this, if you lend him money and you get this loan back in three years, then you pay zakah for three years. You make the calculation 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, and then you pay this zakah. This is one opinion. Abu Hanifa, Ahmed, Imam uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib and, and, and others. The second opinion, um, you have to pay it every year, even, even before you get it. So as long as you do not deny that he's, this is, you, I, I owe you this money and I'll pay it. Um, uh, so it is as if you have this money. As if you have, so this money should be to go toward the Nisab, and if it reaches the Nisab, then you have to pay Zakat every year. Not only when you get it. The third opinion um, says that once you get it, you pay zakah only for one year. Right? The fourth opinion, which is a kind of a weaker opinion, is that there's no zakah on this money because it's not yours. You cannot grow this money. You cannot invest this money for something else. So there's no zakah at all. When you get it, then you have to calculate another year to pay zakah. Are these four opinions clear? Right? That th this is the case when you give money or give loan to someone who acknowledge and, and promise to pay this money back and he's not in financial crisis per se. Right? But what if you give money to someone as a loan and this person denies that I uh, owe you anything? Or he is desperately um, uh, need this money or very poor, cannot pay back. He lost his job and he started business and the business not work. Then, then the ulama said this is different from the first guy who got you the money and he's doing okay and promised to pay it back. So they said in this case, um, uh, no zakah until he pays you back. If he pays you back, then you give zakah for one year. But as long as you are struggling with this guy and he's known of being very uh, uh, argumentative, uh, or he's doing, um, uh, not doing very well. So in this case, there's no zakah because you cannot um, have, um, uh, you, ca you cannot benefit from this money. Um, one opinion says no zakah at all, and others said zakah is due when you get this money back, if you are lucky enough and got this money back. All right? Yeah, you have the hope to get the money back, right? But it may come back later than you expect. Again, again, you have to choose for yourself, either to pay it for every year, or you pay it for every year when you get it, okay? So one opinion, every year you pay, as if you have this money with you, okay? Or pay three years after you get it. That's also okay. That's not haram because you are practically you are delaying the zakah for three years or for two years at least. But you are, that's not haram because you don't have this money. So once you get it, you pay for three years. The third one is to pay for only one year, right? So uh, again, all these are valid opinions. Uh, every opinion supported by many uh, Sahaba and scholars. So. <coughs> Uh, 
Another important question also people ask uh, is the zakat al-jewelry. Um, um, many uh, Muslim women, they have their own uh, jewelry, bracelets and necklaces and rings and, 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 and so on. Is there zakat there? Two opinions, uh, again, and the two opinions are, are supported by many sahaba and scholars. Um, so the first opinion is, yes, if it preached the nisab, then the lady who used this for her own use at home, then she has to pay um, an annual uh, zakat 2.5% as long as this um, uh, jewelry reached the nisab. And this is, is supported by a number of hadith, none of them in the Bukhari and, and Muslim, um, that two ladies came to the Prophet وسلم, uh, to ask questions, and each one of them were wearing uh, bracelets of gold. And Rasulullah وسلم, said, Do you like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give you a bracelet of fire in, in the day of judgment? He said, No. He said, Then pay zakah on these on this, uh, bracelets. Um, another hadith on Aisha radiallahu anha uh, said that one day I, uh, the Prophet sallam, saw in my hand uh, some uh, uh, rings uh, of, of, of made of silver. فَقَالَ لِي مَا هَذَا Aisha? What is this? She said, uh, I made them just to use them for you, Ya Rasulullah, so just to purify myself. He said, do you pay the calf for it? She said, no. Um, uh, then that's enough or that's sufficient for you as a piece of fire in your hand right again this hadith in Abu Dawood and Daraqutni and others however um, uh, three of the four imams uh, said that this is the second opinion the second opinion no zakah as long as she is using this for her own uh, self um, she is not the intention is not to save money as some ladies do in some countries, right? So instead of, they know if you keep the money uh, liquidated, then it's easy to spend. But what they do to make it difficult on themselves, right? Uh, they go and buy uh, a, a ring and then they save some money and then they buy a, a bracelet or something. And they buy it with the intention of saving this money so when her daughter get married or when uh, her son needs to go to college or whatever, she will spend this, this money. She, she, will, she will sell this gold. So in this case, if this is the intention to save money, then um, zakah is due. But if she is buying it just for her own use, then there's no zakah. And that's, the, I think, the stronger uh, opinion. Allah and three of the four imams, um, uh, Imam Ahmad, Shafi'i, and Imam Malik, uh, all of them, they said no zakah on al jewelry that women buy and use. Some imams, that's an, an, uh, a third opinion actually, uh, which I found also very reasonable. Uh, some imams said, uh, many of them are modern uh, scholars. They said that if this jewelry is uh, according to the custom, the normal uh, amount of jewelry usually women in her um, uh, you know, in her class, uh, where then that is no zakah because that's the norm, right? Uh, let's say the orf or the custom for this tribe that the woman had like three rings and, and two necklaces and, and, and uh, two bracelets and rings. That's that's the norm. But um, if anything goes beyond this norm, uh, that that's, cons that's considered too much. So they pay only in this case zakat al -mal. I know in some uh, Muslim uh, Arab countries, I think in Yemen and the Gulf area, um, they have this uh, built, the built made of gold uh, that's given also to the uh, azmah or, or is also given uh, as, as a gift at the time of marriage. marriage. But that, that's too much, uh, although it became their orf, uh, their own orf. So, three opinions. One is that they have to pay zakat al mal every year. If it reached the nisab, if the value of the jewelry reached nisab, and we're talking only about gold and silver, we're not talking about diamonds. That's interesting. The diamonds, there's no zakat for diamonds, right? I know in some rings now they are very, very expensive, tens of thousands of dollars for a ring, uh, but uh, no, no zakat for for anything other than gold and silver. The second opinion, 
no zakah as long as it's like buying a car. You buy the car to use it. So you don't pay zakah for a car, right? You know zakah on your, the value of your clothes because you are wearing them, right? And similarly for the lady, it's part of, of you know, normal practice that ladies, it's, it's, even, even young uh, girls, Quran talked about this. Talking about the girls. They grow up, get used to hilya, uh, adornments, and, and gold and silver, and, and so on and so forth. So as long as they're using it, it's like any, anything else we use. We don't pay zakah for our computers, for devices, for clothes, for um, discs, for furniture, for, for any of these things. And similarly, a woman should not uh, pay zakah unless, I would say, unless that's so much, that too much than, than normal. Um, and the, this is the opinion of the three Imams, as I said, and also the opinion of Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, Abdullah ibn Umar, uh, Aisha. Interesting, the Aisha, the one who narrated the first hadith, right? When the Prophet saw this uh, uh, golden ring, uh, uh, silver ring, she herself, she used to take care of her uh, uh, sister's orphans. And she used to actually bring them gold and silver and things, and she did not pay zakah for this. So, so, um, and Abdullah ibn Umar also has his daughters wearing these things, and he did not pay zakah for this. Um, so, again, two opinions. I, I believe the opinion that women should not pay zakat al mal on the jewelry um, as long as the intention is to use them at home. All right? Uh, another question related to this uh, came, I think, last time, is that who should pay this, the husband or the wife, right? Um, no, of course not the husband. The, as a general ruling, the one who pays the car is the one who owns the money. It's like salah. Everyone has to do it, right? You have to pray, and she has to pray. If you have nisab, you have to pay your zakah. If she owns nisab, and sometimes women... Uh, some wives, they have much more money than their husbands because they are coming from a family. She inherited something from her grandfather who passed away or from her father or whatever, and she has a lot of money. And the husband does not even reach the nisab. So she has to pay zakah for the money she owns. He is not required to, to, to pay zakah because he does not have money. So similarly, for zakat al for those who believe that a woman should pay for the jewelry, then... Um, she has to take care of that, right? If she has the nisab. Similarly, uh, uh, the mahr. You know, in the time of marriage, um, the two families agree on a mahr. So they say, well, uh, $20,000. He said, well, I, I will pay $20,000, but not now. So, yeah, okay, so we'll, everything is different. Later on, it becomes like a debt, right? Now, he owes her these twenty thousand dollars. Now, does she have to pay zakah for the twenty thousand dollars every every year? No, as long as she did not receive this money, right? And and in many cases, she gave up her right. Uh, let's go for Hajj, or let's uh, you know do this, and that's how I give up my mahr. And sometimes uh, mahr is understood in many uh, wrongly understood that uh, mahr is only due at the time of divorce or death of the of the of the, of the husband, and which is not accurate. It is it, yes, it's due in these cases, but it should be paid even before that, uh, because again, it's, it's a promise to pay this mahr. Um, I know in some cultures that's 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 not. You know, nobody pays mahr except in these two cases. Aqrab uh, al Either divorce or death. So if the husband died, then before they distribute his uh, uh, wealth and properties, then they give the, 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 the wife the mahr that she did not receive. And then they distribute things. So she gets the mahr first and then her, her share after that. Ba'di wasiyatin tusuna biha awdayn. So, um, I remember in the Dex Masjid, I, I, I said that it is actually, it is, it's, it's kind uh, for the husband to pay the mahr agreed upon 
uh, not necessarily waiting for his death or waiting for, for God forbid, divorce. So it's a debt. You, you promised that you will give her this money um, just to, to, to uh, as, as Mahriya. So, uh, and someone came to me later on, a few weeks, and said, Imam, I, I did what you asked us to do, but guess what? My wife was very upset. I said, I, I don't understand why she's upset. Do you want to divorce me? She said, what's wrong with you? I said, this is your mark. Take your mark. No, I don't want to take it. <laughs> because she understands that they only take mark at the time of divorce. So she was upset and she refused and she like, wants to stay away. I don't, I don't want it. I said, well, uh, people need to know. That's, this is her right. And if she actually asked for it, it uh, you know, uh, it's been five years now, married, and I want to go for hajj. Uh, can you please give me the $15,000 you promised me? If he has it, he should pay. He should not say no, but uh, no. why, God forbid, I don't want to divorce you. So mahr should be paid once you're able to, because it's a promise. So it, it's a debt. If you promise uh, giving this amount of money, then if you are able to, or you can give it in payments. You can, okay, every time you have $3,000 more, then you go and give her some, and then until you pay it off. So now she is not required to pay for the mahr, the delayed mahr, until she receives it. So once she receives it, then after a year, if it stays there, which is unlikely, right? Uh, if she stays there, then 2.5% is due. Um, Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to get into the details of, of uh, animals and the zakah of uh, agriculture things because it, unless you, 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 are, you have some interest in this, but um, s other, other issues related to um, the, the shares and the stocks. Uh, I think someone asked about this and also have some questions about the, the 401k and the IRA and so on. So um, as for the stocks, uh, it's very interesting that the ulama differentiated between two kinds of, 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 of stocks or share. If you are, have a share in a company, right? Or buy stocks, uh, stocks for a, of a particular company. They said that if you buy these stocks or if you have this share with the intention of benefiting from the money that comes um, as, as part of, the, of your share in the profits that this company makes, right? But the money stays there, um, and you are benefiting from the income that comes as a result of this, huh? Dividend. The dividend, yes. So in this case, there's no zakah on the money that you pay. Let's say you paid $10,000 as your share in a project or in a, in a company. You only pay zakah for the money or the profits that comes uh, from this company, you, you, your share, your dividend. Uh, if it reaches the nisab, and if the year passed by, why it is in your position. But if you buy stocks with the intention of waiting until the price of the stock goes up and you go and sell it, that many people do, the last thing they do before they sleep, the first thing you do when they wake up, look at the stocks to see what's going on because they have to make good decisions sometimes. So in this case, then you have to pay zakah for the capital, for the money you pay and the profits you make as a result of this buying and selling. Because this is considered a, a merchandise or article, articles of merchandise. It is considered like, like someone buys computers and sells computers, right? So the value of these computers he buys, uh, it should be, uh, uh, zakah should be paid for it. So now these are the two um, uh, different, it depends on your intention. Is this point clear? Yes. Well, some said 2.5%, and these are the majority, and some said 10%, but this is the minority. Uh, so 2.5%, I believe, because this is the, the money. You, 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 the money, by the way, as we understand it now, never existed in the time of the Fuqaha and the Abu Hanifa and Shafi'i and these the great scholars. So when, they, when we talk about money now, we're talking about gold and silver, which is the, the real value of the um, bank notes we have. We call it $10 or $100 or whatever green bills we have, 
right? So, so. Um, value of the new value again if you buy it for ten thousand it's as if you you have ten thousand and the middle of the year you add it two thousand so in the end of the year you calculate everything you have and you give two point five percent on everything on everything yes twelve thousand you can cash it if you want at any time it's your money you you, you froze it in in, in, in in forms of stocks it's like it's like it's like you again you have you have a business of um, uh, cell phones, right? So you buy cell phones for $10,000 with the intention of selling them, okay? So next year, you have to calculate how much cash you have and the value of the cell phones you have in your store and, and pay zakat for everything. I know his opinion is to pay 10 percent. I know, I know. It does not matter if the price goes up and down as long as the total value is above the Nisab. It does not matter. So let's say you bought stocks for $10,000, right? With the hope that the value will be like 11 or 12,000, 13,000 after a year. But unfortunately, things went south and this 10,000 became 8,000. You still have a Nisab. Then you still have to pay 2.5% of this of the 8,000 because it's above the Nisab. And this is what happened in business. I mean, in, in any business, you make uh, this case, you buy cell phones to sell them. Sometimes you make profit, sometimes you make, you lose. But if you have the value of the products or, or the goods you have, in addition to whatever cash you have, above the sub, that's, that's, that, that's the, cr the criteria. Not whether you make money or you lose money. Because you can lose money and still have the sub. No, dividend is a different story. D dividend, you're talking about sh your share that you don't pay zakat. It's not z z zakat, um, uh, zakatable as some say. It. There's no zakat on the share. Let's say your share is 10,000. And every year you get like 7%. Then you pay zakat only the 7%, not on the 10,000. Yes. On, on, only on the dividends only. Or, 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 it, again, it depends on the int your intention. If your intention is to buy today and sell it once the price goes up, that, that is, zakah is due on this, uh, the price of, this, of the share and in addition to the profits that, that comes as a result of it. Well, well, again, it, it, it goes to what is the main intention. Like, I want to talk about intention things. It could be very subtle. And for Hajj, if, if you're going for Hajj, can you do business in the side? The ulama said yes. If your intention to make Hajj, you can do anything in the side. But if your intention is to go and do business, and Hajj, you know, or just go Arafat, that, that's not, that's not, so the main intention is, is the one that we're talking about. If it's 60% buying to sell, then, then you have to pay on everything. If the intention is that to put their share and wait for the uh, dividend, and then you pay only. It's like three of us uh, want to buy a bus okay, for transportation. And, and people uh, will rent this bus. So let's say the price is 15000 for example. Everybody pays 5000 right? 
We don't pay zakah on the 5,000. We pay zakah only for the revenue that comes as a result of renting this bus. But if you are uh, buying uh, stocks for a number of companies um, um, with the intention, again, of, of selling the, 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 the stock when, in, when the price goes up, then you have to pay zakah for everything. Absolutely. 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 The same thing actually also applies to those who buy a piece of land <coughs> or buy a house with the intention of uh, keeping it for your son. When your son grows up, then you get married in this house. Uh, or buying this house with the intention, again, of selling this house when the price goes up. If this is your intention, that's investment, then you have to pay zakah every year. Because you can keep this house empty for five years, whatever, right? So if the intention is to use it yourself or your son or your family, then there's no zakah on it. But again, if you buy it with the intention of selling it to make some money, then you have to pay zakah every year for the value of the house on this year. You, you, you bought it cash? You, you yeah, let's say that you Once you sell it, then you have to pay for the years past. Um, if they say uh, one year, then you have to pay for that year and the year when you sold, when you, when, yes. Or if you rent it, then it's a different story. You pay money on, uh, you pay zaka only on the money you get from the rent, not from the house itself. Wallahu a'lam. Okay. No, that's 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 different. Okay. Go ahead. Do you know this? How long would it take to reach this level of maturity? Or it's not known. Is a mutual fund kind of, or 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 you are talking about uh, retirement plans? Right. Okay. So generally speaking, because what the. What is common between all these cases is that whether you own the money or not, or you have access, uh, is this money accessible or not, right? So the ulama talked in the past about different kind of money that's yours but not yours. In other words, it is they talk about the maghsub, or masloob, or masruq, uh, and all these kinds. Of masruq, someone stole money from you. You know that he stole this money from you. He works for you and he stole five thousand dollars from your company. Right, so so now, uh, should you pay five thousand uh, dollars? Uh, this five thousand dollars should be calculated calculated in our zakah or not? Should we pay zakah for it or not? Um, if someone, they talk also about some case when someone goes and hides some money or gold or silver somewhere, then he forgot, which happens sometimes. No, not these this day, these days. In the past, it ha it may happen. Okay, but what if you find it after five years? Okay, so this is one, one, another opinion. So you own the money, but you cannot, you don't have the money. Al-mal al-mutanaza alay. Mutanaza alay means that you dispute it. This niza or dispute. And you say, no, no, this is mine. No, 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 that's not yours. It's mine. So would you consider this money your money and pay zakah therefore, or unless or until you get this money 
then you pay zakah for it. So similarly, uh, the ulama talked about the modern uh, retirement plans, uh, whether 401k and uh, IRA and, and similar plans when you, uh, your employer pays something and the employee pays something, and but you don't have any, um, you don't have access to this money, or if you get, if you really want to take money, then you have to pay penalty, 10% penalty. So again, two opinions. One opinion says, well, this is your money. You chose to put it this way. So we are saving this money. Um, and you know uh, that you are not going to touch this money until you are 55 or uh, uh, 59 and a half or 60. Um, you know that. And you like it and you agree with this. That's one opinion. Uh, it is your money. You have to pay Zika every year for it. And the other opinion, which is more popular and more accepted by, by many scholars, modern scholars, is that you pay only zakah, two opinions here, zakah for all years past, all right? The other opinion, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, who said you pay only for one year. No? Once you get it. Yeah, of, in all cases, it is no zakah until you get it. Only one opinion said that it's your money, this zakah is due every every uh, every year, but the second opinion says that zakah is due when you get it. But the difference is, how would you pay for the 15, 20 years, um, or you pay only for one year? Imam Malik uh, said that you pay only for one year because this is when you get the money. You pay for one year; that's sufficient for all these years. And the majority, I would say, uh, of the ulama said, no, you pay for all the years that pass because you saved this money and, and uh, then you have to pay zakah for this. Two opinions, the, the famous, the more popular opinion, many uh, ulama give fatwa with this, you pay only for this retirement plan when you get the money, for one year only. Yes. No, it's not wrong. No, that's not wrong. Because it is an opinion of... No, there's nothing wrong as long as it's coming from qualified scholars. Yes. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Nope, there's nothing wrong with that. Yes. The same thing. Is it the money disputed between between uh, uh, inheritors? Uh, so now someone passed away, and it happens all the time uh, within the family. Um, people have disputed brothers and sisters and wives have more than one wife, and um, brothers from the father only, and brothers from the sister from the mother only, and, and so on. So and again. It's not your, if, as long as it's not in your position, that's not yours. Even if it is on paper, it's, you get this, let's just say, one third. One third of this tarika is yours. But until you get it, once on the day when you receive it, then you calculate or wait for the, for the entire year to come, and then you pay its zakah. But if, if it is disputed in the court, then you have to wait until you get it, you get, you receive your, your share. Now? Again, this is one of the things that also discussed in the new uh, Majama Fiqiyya or councils of, of fiqh, modern um, uh, councils of fiqh. Well, the, the opinion here is that you should not buy stocks of a company that has haram business. All right? Um, uh, huh? So. What? Well, that's not your business. That's your, that, no, no, that's not, that's not your responsibility. If, if the company 
buys and sells halal products, but they have deals with banks, uh, and they 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 also get interest from banks. Or that's not not because you cannot control this. That's beyond your control. But you choose based on the business, the service, or the goods they 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 provide. Allah Allah. Because if you, you are not required, generally speaking in Islam, you are not required to go and investigate. Because if we open this door, we will never be able to close it. You go to the grocery store to buy milk. Where does this milk come from? What do they feed these cows? Bread. You have to go and ask about every single thing in this bread. Um, so the ulama said that if you don't know um, about something, then you are not, you are not, it's not obligatory upon you to investigate. When Omar عنه, was walking with some of his sahaba, يعني, his people, and, and, and the mizab, this, uh, this uh, what do you call it, the gutter, brought uh, water on them. So someone said, is this water najis? And Omar told him, don't tell us. I didn't want to ask him. If you don't smell something or see something, then it's, it's, it's pure. You, you, why are you investigating? Right? Right. If you really open this door, you'll put yourself in big trouble, huge trouble. You're in t I, I know some Muslims that are live with this, are possessed with this, you know, halal, pure. There's not, nothing 100% purely halal or 100%, you know. It, 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 because we're not living in. in, uh, in, in in uh, the, under the Abbasids in the 10th century, who are living in the United States. Um, so, yes. Yes, inshallah. Well, that's a good question, um, but again, uh, you are assuming that zakah is, is due on the jewelry, which, again, I know it's the Hanafi opinion, but I, I, I found the other opinion to be stronger and makes a lot of sense. Because um, uh, why is that the man buys a watch for $10,000 watch and no zakah, and the woman wears what she's supposed to wear for $5,000 and she's he, she pays the guy. It doesn't make any sense, right? Some pens and, and watches and, and suits are much, much more expensive. And, and the man does not, is not required to pay anything. Yeah, but, but some occasion you, she wears it. Everybody, every one of us has some clothes for some occasions. You know, when you go to a wedding, you don't go with jeans, right? You go with a necktie and, and suit and shoes and all these things. That could be much more expensive than... So I, I, I just want to make this point clear that if, if, if you and your wife believe that you have to pay zakah, that's your choice. But again, the one who is required to pay zakah is the one who owns the money. If, if, if she agreed with her husband that I will take part of this money to pay my zakah, and her husband said, fine, it's your allowance, I will give you uh, $1,500 every month or $2,000 every month, and you do whatever you want, now, now she can do that. But it's always good for the husband and wife to talk about these things. Really, just to, for, for, for the sake of transparency. Fine. I mean, it, they need to talk to each other. Some, if the, if the guy is paid, if the husband says, "Okay, you know, you don't have cash, you are not working, you don't have your own money," then I will pay this account on your behalf. Fine. Alhamdulillah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, absolutely. But she also needs to understand that someone has to pay this money, and uh, because this is due on her. Okay. So she has to, or they have to talk to each other just to make sure that this is the guy of jewelry, and, and I'll pay it. 
on your behalf. Fine. It's like someone says, okay, you want to make Hajj? Okay, here's $10,000 gift for you. Go and make Hajj. You can take this money as a gift and go and make Hajj, and Hajj is perfectly fine. All right? Some ulama also, uh, in my reading, I found out another interesting point when it comes to stocks that um, uh, zakah is, is, is depends on the activities or the, the 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 activities of the company, and they differentiated between um, companies uh, of uh, some, for example, transportation, uh, airlines, and uh, you know. Ships or cars or uh, um, so they are not buying and selling products. They are not manufacturing something like Apple. Apple makes something and sells it, right? So they they industrial and they trade. But for the companies who are not producing or manufacturing something, um, uh, uh, they 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 differentiate between the two. In, in, in that, those who are not producing something, if you buy these stocks, then these stocks is not zakah, uh, 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 eligible for zakah. But if you buy stocks in, in a company that manufacture and trade, they sell, then you have to pay zakah for these stocks. This is one of the opinions I found interesting um, recently um, and, and the differentiate between the two things. Um, in that, uh, the example I just gave you when three people buy a bus, right? So in this case, you don't pay zakah for your share because you are giving a share to buy a bus, but you pay money for the, um, at the profits, right? And similarly, some made the analogy of uh, buying the stock of an airline, for example, right? Um, in this case, they are not buying something and selling something. So you don't pay zakah for this, this stock, but you pay the zakah for the revenue or the, your share, uh, the dividend of this company. But if you buy a stock of uh, Apple, for example, or manufacture something and they sell, uh, or other company like Amazon, for example, Amazon buys and sells all the time. That's, that's what they do. So in this case, then you have to pay for the price of the of the stock and the money and the profit that comes out of it. Um, so, does it make sense? <coughs> Mom? But they buy and, well, well, they, they, they have a deal with companies. Okay, hold on. Okay, so they don't manufacture something, but they are between the manufacturer and the customer, they are in between. So they, w their business is facilitating this, facilitating this, uh, the, the space. So you buy through them, through, through them, through them. Forget about Amazon. So let me give you another example. Uh, what? Uh, yes, right, right. It's different from, from a publisher, for example. Right, published books. So their business based on selling something, all right, a product. But uh, so, so okay. Let me clarify this. The example I gave about three people buying a bus, and the other example will be if these three people buy, uh, let's say, uh, clothes. Everybody gives five thousand dollars, so I have fifteen thousand dollars. Now you go and in, in Pakistan and buy. Shirwal Kameez and all these nice clothes with the intention of selling it here in America. All right? So after a year, you have goods worth of 10,000 as a result of this business and you still have another 10,000 cash. Okay? So you pay tax for everything. Now, what is the difference now between the two businesses? Buying a bus and buying clothes. When you buy a bus, you don't pay for the price of the bus. You pay only for what comes out of this bus. The money comes out of it, renting it. But when you buy clothes or computers or cell phones, this stock itself with your share there is valuable. And you have to pay the cap for it and the profits you get out of it. It's called Urudu Tigara. 
And of course, you can multiply this for those who have own you know, millions of dollars, those who bought you know, millions of, of, of dollars worth goods from China, for example. Right? Many, many people do that. So when the ship comes, this, the, the price of these products is as if it is gold and silver you have. There's no difference. It's money. It's considered money. It's called urud at tijara. Is this point clear? Because the Quran and the Sunnah did not say anything about it. That's that's the the simple answer. Um, no, platinum. Platinum is, is more. I think some say that's more expensive than gold. But internationally speaking, the, 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 the standard for the worth of money, the value of money, is gold. So we go with gold, not with the platinum. All right? No. Yeah, but you can buy gold and silver with, the val with, with dollars. You can go to a jewelry store and give them dollar and take gold. So it, it, it has its value. Yeah, same thing with diamond. I, I know that. Of course, this is a good point. I, I perhaps forgot to say. If someone buys diamonds or platinum and sells it, that the jewelry stores, K, right? So if you are interested in this business, then you, of course, that's again, it's like the like clothes you, you bought with the intention of selling. In this case only, but not, not for, 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 for use. Islam actually is making it easier for us. So, in other words, I, I know, it, I, when I read the same thing, I, I, I also thought that's what the difference. In the two cases, you are making money. Uh, your intention is to increase your, your, your income. But the, 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 the subtle difference here is that when you invest money in building a factory, for example, right? So, so if you put $5 million in building a factory, all the machines, the building, the land, all assets are not, uh, 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 should not be paid the cat for. So in other words, it's like, you know, what, what we call it today, the tax um, relief. The tax relief, when, when, when the economy is not doing well and you want to encourage business, so you know what, I'm not gonna get taxes from you for 10 years to encourage people to invest in real projects. So it's, it's tax-free for 10 years. So this attract people to come to invest their money in this country. Many countries do that. So Islam says the same thing. Islam says if you want to put this money in a project that will benefit the entire community, it will, will benefit so many people and will contribute to the growth of the economy, then no taxes on building land, Anything? Okay. Um, only the zakah uh, to be paid for the revenue, the profits you make out of, of this factory. Okay, so, but where, if you buy, if you put this $5 million in buying clothes, okay, in this case, it, you are changing the money from cash or gold into clothes. And it's time to say there's no difference here. This is still money. You pay. You have to pay the account this money. You, you see the point.
Well, this is this is one po point of view. Um, but again, the ulama differentiate between the two kind of activities because of that. From from your side, you you are right. But from from his perspective, what what kind of activities, what kind of product or service he is making uh, or or engaging in to make money, it makes a difference. It makes a difference. So so therefore therefore. You also must consider this because when you buy a stock for a company, you know what kind of activities they're doing, right? And this actually should be a good news for you and for him because you don't have to pay tax for all these things. You just have to wait for the money you make in order to pay his account. That, that's, that's, that's incentive, incentive for giving to you from Islam. That, that's why no zakah is, is due until you sell things and make profits. That's incentive. Have to be, it has, doesn't have to be physical thing, yes, absolutely, because you are selling something. So, so again, I, I like this term that Brother Zeki used that you have different categories for the zakah. Again, the example I gave buying a bus and buying clothes here, you don't have to pay zakah except for the profits, but here you have to pay the zakah for the clothes. And although both of them they paid the same amount of money with the intention of making profits, but the property here, which is the bus. Again, it's an incentive because you are you, this in of itself something you are using to make money. You pay only for the profit that comes out of it. But for the maintenance of this bus, the use of it, there's no zakah. But whereas here, I know it, it's different category that called arud uh, tijara. You have money and you are changing this money from one form to another form, which is clothes or um, cell phones or something like this. this case in this case you, you pay only for the profits yes well again it's not my opinion I'm just I'm not the one who made it but um, if you take it from a very simple analogy to uh, this more complex analogy uh, to me it's clear it to me it's clear. You, if you buy if you build the house with the, or, or apartments right with the intention of renting these apartments Right? You spend like $5 million to build a nice building. You have you know, 25 apartments. You only pay zakah from the money that comes as a result of the renting. This after, of course, um, all uh, taxes and maintenance and all these things. And then whatever stays, then you pay zakah. But if you use the same amount of money, $5 million, to buy products and sell them, it's still money. Then you have to pay zakah for, for this money. That, that's another dimension also looking at it. Yes, Brother Muhammad, the last question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As a tax in, 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 in incentives, yes. جزاكم الله خير ونكون uh, we'll next week سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم العصر من الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصلوا بالحق وتواصلوا بالصبر سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين